Coming up, the Phillies get all the offense they need in their first at-bat, and the Rangers win their fifth in a row. This is Locked On Game to Game MLB. Every game, every team, every angle. Locked On Game to Game, your team every day. Welcome in. You're watching Locked On Game to Game MLB. Local experts going over the biggest stories in baseball. I'm your host, Peter Bukowski. Thank you so much for making Locked On your first listen every single weekday. Kyle Schwarber hit a home run in the first at-bat of the game. And then nobody scored the rest of the day, giving the Phillies a win over the Tigers. Locked On Phillies recaps the shutout. That is the ball game, ladies and gentlemen. The Philadelphia Phillies win one to nothing. Connor Thomas, your host of Locked On Phillies. It's their fourth straight victory. They've won the first two against the Detroit Tigers. And listen, I know, it's only one to nothing. It wasn't a huge offensive performance. Kyle Schwarber with the only run in the game, and it came in a leadoff home run for the home nine. Uh, I mean, Schwarber as a leadoff hitter in June is an unfair combination. The Phillies defense has figured it out. The Phillies pitching has figured it out. Taiwan Walker had a great start tonight. Seven innings of two-hit ball, none earned. I mean, the bullpen closes it down. Sir Anthony, Craig Campbell with another save. Uh, it wasn't the prettiest game. It wasn't the most dominant victory, but those are types of games that you're going to have to win, and earlier iterations of this year's Phillies would have lost this game. Today, the momentum, the finish, the Kyle Schwarber leadoff home run, all got it done. And we'll be talking about another win, uh, Phillies win on the next episode of Locked on Phillies. The Astros got a leadoff home run as well against the Blue Jays, but then Toronto scored five unanswered the rest of the way to pick up a home win. Locked on hosts with both teams take you through how it played out. A dominating performance by, oh, that's right, Kevin Gossman, 13 strikeouts. He looked dominant. Look, he's 2-0 and for the Blue Jays in June with 24 strikeouts and only allowed two walks in 13.2 innings total. Look, the Astros had no answers for him. Dubon leads off with the home run. You think, okay, they're going to set the tone. They're going to continue to do what they did yesterday, dominate the Blue Jays. No, they lost 5-1. to Yordan Alvarez, Alex Bregman, and Jeremy Pena combined for nine of the 16 strikeouts. Jake Myers had three strikeouts. A lot of people were upset that Diaz didn't start, but I don't know that his being in the lineup would have really changed much. When you're dominated by a pitcher and you got no counterpunch, there's not much you can do. I break that down on the latest Locked on Astros podcast. Remember, become an everyday or make us your first listen every single day. And make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Check us out and follow us. Whether they win or lose, we are your team every day. Go Stros. Tuesday night, Blue Jays win to even this Astros series. Yes. Hello, friends. Craig Ballard, Locked on Blue Jays. Downright sporting of Kevin Gosman to allow the Astros leadoff batter of the game to hit a home run because he knew he was going to be locked in and dominant tonight. Should I perhaps say dominant again tonight, right? What a 2023 Kevin Gosman is authoring for the Toronto Blue Jays. On pace for all kinds of franchise records this season, including most strikeouts per nine innings and the best strikeout to walk ratio in franchise history. Gosman at this point actually would have to fall flat on his face to not get that strikeout to walk ratio franchise record. Blue Jays now 6-6 six and six in Gosman starts. Now, how on earth, if he's been so good, how are the Blue Jays just a 500 team when Gosman pitches? Because the offense has been completely unacceptable. Blue Jays averaging 3.08 runs per game. Wait, what? That's it? When Gosman starts, they've scored exactly three runs in Gosman's last four starts. Had to actually rally in the eighth today just to keep it from being a fifth straight game of just three runs. Huh. Now, join me tomorrow on Locked on Blue Jays as we get set for the Hound on the Mound. The Rangers moved further ahead of the Astros in the AL West by beating the Cardinals, who fell further into last place in the NL Central with the loss. Locked on Rangers recaps Texas' fifth straight win. Really bad news. They did what they've been doing all season and got some wins on the field, no matter what was happening to them. I'm Bryce Paddock, host of the Locked On Rangers podcast. Rangers win 6-4 to four in this one after finding out that Jacob deGrom is going to be out for at least 12 months due to his elbow injury. Dane Dunning steps up and does... Not not great, honestly. This was one of his worst starts of the season. Five and two-thirds innings, four runs, all of which were earned, including three home runs, which was a career high. But the Rangers 
got enough from their offense, home runs from Nathaniel Lowe and Adoles Garcia, who had four hits in this one, four for four, and Ezekiel Duran went three for three. And also, of course, it wouldn't be a Rangers game in the last month or so without a Marcus Simeon hit. 25 straight games, his hit streak keeps going. The Rangers keep winning. The bullpen does just enough, and a really great outing from Josh Boards as well. Coming up, one White Sox player drives in more runs than the whole Yankees lineup. This is Locked On Game to Game MLB. Today's episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. We all could use some help staying on track, achieving our goals, finding a way to be the best versions of ourselves. And that's what BetterHelp can help you do. Sometimes you just feel behind and you want to get caught up. Sometimes you understand you're not as organized as you could be. You're not as confident as you could be. And that's what talking to someone, a licensed therapist, can help you do. And that's what BetterHelp provides for you. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire and get light matched with a licensed professional and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Find more balance with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash MLB today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash MLB. Welcome back to Locked On Game to Game MLB. I'm your host, Peter Bukowski. Thank you so much for making Locked On your first listen every day. The Red Sox scored four runs in the eighth inning to take the lead and the Guardians' comeback attempt the rest of the way came up just short. Locked on Guardians explains the one-run loss. Cleveland Guardians continue to be a day late and dollar short. That's not going to trigger anybody about this franchise. I'm Justin Latikos of Locked on Guardians. Shane Eber had a solid start. He had one weird miscue play where he decided to throw to second base, and that did end up allowing a run to score and the guardians did lose five to four so you could say that was one of the reasons they lost uh the four run blow up by Daniel de los santos and nick sandlin late in the game guys we have argued to get more chances that didn't work out so good the team just continues to find ways to lose uh close games they keep putting their bullpen in close games the offense had a late surge they scored a couple runs in the eighth inning made it interesting they look like they're going to have a chance to win this game and maybe pull something out and make everybody feel good but alas they were a little bit short because there was again another one run game the bullpen couldn't hold and just not enough runs in the end they will try it again on Wednesday against the Boston Red Sox. Stay tuned to Lockdown Guardians. The Nationals sure knew how to set the tone against the Diamondbacks with a first inning grand slam. Busy first innings tonight. But then Arizona dropped nine runs in four innings to turn the tables. Locked On Nationals tells us what went wrong in those middle innings. Ryan Clary from Locked On Nationals here as the Nationals drop game one of the Diamondback series 10-5 to Obviously, let's talk about it because Stone Garrett in a little revenge game action in that first inning hit a grand slam. That was a little fun moment, but that was really it as the Nationals bullpen was once again the story tonight. But before we get into the bullpen, let's talk about Jake Irvin because let's be honest, it was not a pretty outing. It hasn't been a pretty outing in a while when it comes to Jake Irvin. The command has been off. He's been walking a lot of hitters. It hasn't been pretty so far. So we're going to have to start talking about him maybe joining that bullpen there. But obviously the bullpen really stunk up the joint tonight. Let's just be honest. Another night, another blow up by this Washington Nationals bullpen. What's the fix? I can give you everything that I know over here on Locked On Nationals, where you get your team every day. Seve Zavala drove in all three of the White Sox runs Tuesday, beating the Yankees on his own. Our Locked On White Sox host takes us through his big day. The Chicago White Sox beat the New York Yankees 3-2 to two in New York. Hey, I'm Nick Murawski from Locked On White Sox. White Sox starter Lucas Giolito went six innings, did not give up a hit, uh, but the pitch count got him. Uh, he was at 100 pitches. It's the second time this season where Giolito has left a game uh, after six innings without giving up a hit. First time in White Sox history. Liam Hendricks came in out of the bullpen in the ninth and got his first save since 
beating cancer. Sebi Zavala, the nine hitter, backup catcher, had two home runs. That was the offense for the White Sox. Uh, Sox try to make it two in a row on Wednesday with Lance Lynn on the Hill. For more, check out the Locked On White Sox podcast. The Cubs followed the theme of the night, jumping out to an early evening in Anaheim before the Angels took the lead for themselves in the middle innings. Our Locked On hosts tell you who came out on top in this back and forth battle between Chicago and LA. What's going on everybody? John here. Hey, it's Mike. We're here together. We're in Angels. Right. Hey. <laughs> hey, uh, we're celebrating a huge Angels win over the Cubs, seven to four. Mike Trout hit, Matt Tice hit, uh, Brandon Drury did well. Everybody hit. Everybody it was hit fantastic. well with runners in scoring position. How about that? And so. the bullpen held it. It was so awesome. 7-4, Angels win, 32-30. and 30. We're going to talk about this game, recap this game, and share our personal experiences on Locked on Angels. We hope you'll join us. Cubs blow another big lead, a four-run lead this game, and lose 7-4. to four. I'm not sure the rest of the major leagues, and nor should they because they have their own teams to, to worry about, realizes how bad this Cubs season has been. Uh, it's not just the record. Like, the, the way they lose games is it's unbelievable. Today they were up 4-0. Otani had a solo homer, 4-1. Then in the fifth inning, a crucial error by Matt Mervis, a misplay in center field by Mike Taubman that led to Trout's game time single on a ball that should have been caught uh, and then a big two-run base hit by I believe his name is Matt Tice Tice um, that gave the Angels the lead and they never look back 7-4 final Cubs are just two games above St. Louis for the worst uh, record in the National League so today's episode brought to you by our friends at Bird Dogs Bird Dogs make you look good in fact I wore Bird Dogs today I'm wearing Bird Dogs as I am speaking with you right now. A different pair of bird dogs. I'm not kidding at all. I wore a pair of bird dog stretch khakis today to go play golf. It rained. I wasn't able to go play golf. And so I came home and I put on a pair of bird dog joggers. That's just how comfortable these things are. They succeeded where others have failed to build quality athleisure that looks really good great and fits really great and feels really great. Usually you have to sacrifice on one of those things, not with bird dogs. Go to birddogs.com slash locked on MLB and enter promo code locked on MLB for a free Yeti style tumbler with your order. That's birddogs.com slash locked on MLB for a free Yeti style tumbler. You do not want to take off your bird dogs. Once you put them on, I am proof of that. They're on me right now, and I do not want to take them off. Welcome back to Locked On Game to Game MLB. I'm your host, Peter Bukowski. Thank you so much for joining Locked On on your first listen every day. The Rays got a shutout win Tuesday by beating the Twins in Tampa. Minnesota managed just four hits against Zach Eflin and the Tampa bullpen, and Locked On Twins goes over the loss. It's another Locked On Twins breathless post-game minute, and it's another embarrassing offensive output for the Twins in a 7-0 loss at the drop. Twins come out looking entirely flat. Stop me if you've heard this one, but they struck out 12 times. No runs on four hits, 0 for 4 with runners in scoring position, and basically it was all what it has been all season long. Um 150 strikeouts looking for the Twins this season, second most in MLB. They are 4-19 and 19 in games in which they score three runs, actually fewer than three runs, so two runs or fewer. The Twins are 4-19. and 19. Only three teams have done so more often than the Twins 23 times. It's the Oakland A's with 32, the Pirates with 24, and the Padres with 24. I guess check back tomorrow and see if anything's changed. Things looked grim for the Reds last night. Down two runs to the Dodgers going into their last at-bat. But then Cincinnati scored three in the ninth to walk off and stun Los Angeles. Locked on Reds recaps the thrilling finish. The future is now. What's up? This is Jeff Carr from the Locked on Reds podcast. Steve Offenbaker here as well. Still in town. Absolutely 
I, I, I don't know that it could have went better. Ellie De La Cruz got a double, 112 miles an hour, the hardest ball hit by a red. And then Maddie McLean walks it off, RBI single to win in the bottom of the ninth. The Reds come from behind to get the win against the million, multi-million dollar Dodgers. You aren't as fired up as we are. That's true. And you're going to want to make sure to join us on the next Lockdown Reds podcast because, oh my goodness, this party's just starting. That's right. The future is now. Check us out in your podcast feeds tomorrow. The Giants and Rockies went the first two months of the season without playing each other. And our Locked On hosts tell you who came out on top in the first game between the division rivals all season. The Giants got close to their full strength lineup back tonight and right away you can see that when they're all together this is one of the deepest and potentially best lineups in the National League. This is Ben Kaspic with the Locked On Giants podcast. These guys were incredible tonight. They scored 10 runs and they really could have scored like 18. Lamont Wade Jr. was on base six times. Tyro Estrada comes off the injured list, as, do, as does Jock Peterson. Michael Conforto gets back in the lineup. Mike Yastrzemski gets back in the lineup. It's just a really, really deep offense. And 10 runs, it felt like, you know, a little bit of a disappointment. They should have done more. Granted, it's Coors, Coors Field. But also, the pitching did a really good job. Sean Manaya continues to do pretty darn well out of the bullpen in long relief. And then all the other relievers did a really nice job. So great win for the Giants. Back to 500. We'll break this one down tomorrow on Locked on Giants, where it's your team every day. Locked on Rockies fans, Paul Alden here from the Locked on Rockies podcast. And when you walk a team that can do damage double-digit times and throw over 200 pitches in the ball game, you're not going to win. Even with some good extra base hits and some late performances, the Rockies simply are dealing with the issues of their lack of starting pitching depth. Again, the, the turning to Denelson Lamette as the starter isn't working and just the walks are... Honestly, plain unacceptable. The Rockies aren't going to win ball games with double-digit walks, especially with almost every pitcher the Rockies send out there getting a walk in the game. I'm yawning so much because it was a snoozer as well for the Rockies for most of that. Kind of uh, the tough stretch continues, and if they want to continue their march back towards 500, they got to beat teams like the Giants, and uh, it just feels like the Giants continue to be a bully against the Rockies. We'll talk about it all on Locked On Rockies. That'll do it for this edition of Locked On Game to Game. Thank you so much for making Locked On your first listen every single weekday. Make sure you subscribe to Locked On MLB and your team's favorite Locked On podcast on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. I'm Peter Bukowski. This has been Locked On Game to Game.